Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Loftus Podcast. And today we have another fantastic guest, and I'm really looking forward to speaking to our guest today. And we're going to be speaking to Doug Evans. Doug has been a pioneer in the plant-based health movement for over 20 years. He was the co-founder of Organic Avenue and the founder of Juicero. He has been channeling the power of sprouts and his transformative plans into the Sprout Book and advising tens of thousands of people on the ancient wisdom of sprouts as a food source. Currently living in the California desert, he is sprouting daily, growing a majority of his food in his own countertop garden, uh, creating a radical shift in wellness through the discussion of growing sprouts and their healing benefits. Um, I actually came across Doug on a, on a podcast that was more about entrepreneurship and business, and I was fascinated to hear about someone on a podcast like that talking about sprouts and raw foods and everything else so it was great to hear that 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 message in a different in a completely different environment and um, Doug is there anything you want to uh, share about yourself as an introduction on top of what we've just shared there yeah I mean it, it's interesting because I've been an entrepreneur my whole career um, but about 22 years ago I could no longer do things just for the money, right? There needed to be mission, meaning, purpose behind it. And, you know, that journey, when you want to do things in a pure way, um, right. ends up facing a lot of friction, you know, a lot of challenges along the way. So I found it, you know, particularly interesting. And I don't know which podcast, was it the Paul Shapiro um, Better Business one or... It was, Simon uh, Hill. it was Brad Lee, actually. Oh, Brad Lee. Yeah, yeah. dropping bombs, Brad Lee. Yeah, so, yeah. But so, what, I loved, what I loved about that was that you are so confident and, and strong with that message, even in an environment where you're not, it's not like a raw food event or a vegan event where you'll have a lot of supporters and people on your side. Uh, so I was just blown away by that. I thought, this is so great how he shares that message to an audience and in an environment that might not have come across a message like that before. So I, I really like that. Yeah, I mean, look, I think the thing is, my message is very clear. Plants are good for you, right? <laughs> and yeah. Plants are good for you. And some of the insights that I've had over the last several years, which prompted me to write the Sprout book was that sprouts are vegetables, right? And vegetables sure. are food. And that every benefit of eating fresh vegetables, raw vegetables, cooked vegetables can be achieved through eating sprouts. So it's like, whoa, sprouts are a vegetable when most of the world doesn't think about sprouts at all. And if they think about sprouts, they're thinking of them as a garnish when in fact sprouts are a vegetable. And to take it further, sprouts are vitamins and minerals. And so every single vitamin and mineral that exists in any plant exists somewhere in the sprout world because every fruit or vegetable tree begins with a seed that was sprouted, right? So right. sprouts contain vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, polyphenols, antioxidants, bioflavonoids. Um, they contain amino acids. As a matter of fact, every single sprout is a complete protein in varying degrees of the individual essential amino acids that form proteins. So, so that's the second thing. Number one, sprouts are vegetables. Number two, sprouts are vitamins. Number three, sprouts are medicine, like really powerful medicine. And there probably is a, um, a treatment, not necessarily a cure for most major chronic and acute illnesses, through the consumption and the power of sprouts, Amazing. right? So there's been more than 2,500 peer-reviewed published white papers on broccoli sprouts alone. Oh, well. So if you go deeper, they, they, there's many more studies to be done. So, you know, if I back up a little bit and we talk about sprouts and why I'm enthusiastic about sprouts uh, being raw, and I've been predominantly raw vegan for 22 years. So my diet is I eat sprouts, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, and seaweeds. Like that is what I eat and almost always raw. Amazing. And, 
So one of the things about sprouts is people talk about whole food. Well, most food that they're eating, it may not be processed. So the, the definition of whole is, is processed less. So right. you're eating a piece of mature broccoli, you're eating a chunk of pineapple, you're eating greens, but almost all of those um, things that are defined as whole foods are actually part of a whole food. When in fact you're consuming sprouts, you are truly eating the whole food, the root, the shoot, the endosperm, the embryo, the testa, they're all in there. And so it's really powerful to have this really tight concentration that contains the energy and the nutrients within them, the fuel within it to go from a dormant seed into a living plant organism. So that's what gets me so excited about sprouts. So when I meet a guy like Bradley, and I never heard of Bradley, but one of my friends um, was on his podcast. So I saw my friend on it. So I just started to send the guy uh, DMs saying, hey, hey, Brad, how's your sprout game? You know, have you read <laughs> my book? And, you know, eventually, you know, he got triggered. We got involved in a dialogue. And then he said, hey, come on my, come on my, um, my podcast and drop some bombs. And I was Amazing. like, okay, I'm down. Count me in, I'm down. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess what, what I like to start off with, because I, I always think that there's an audience out there that are thinking, where do I start? How do I get going with this? Maybe everyone that's doing this was you know, brought up this way or privileged in some way. Was you, did your upbringing signal in a sense that you were going to become like a raw foodist eating loads of sprouts or, or how, how were you brought up? What was your diet like and lifestyle growing up? I mean, I grew up in relative scarcity, eating standard American food, meat, chicken, fish, dairy, pasta, bread, you know, roasted peanuts. And when I say scarcity, we didn't have a lot of money. My, my mother, may she rest in peace, would dish out portions. So there was a lot of portion control. And then, you know, then at 17, I joined the army, which is probably the worst processed food on the planet, right? The wow. most levels of processing, preservatives, et cetera. And when I got out of the army and I started to work and I started to make money, I was rewarding myself, you know, with cooked food, processed food, refined food, meat, dairy, animal products, you know, desserts, because that was the reward system. Sure. So I was literally like living to eat. Like I loved food, I lived to eat. And then in a very short time period, about 22 years ago, when I was in my mid thirties, my aunt got diabetes and they chopped off both of her feet below her ankles. Oh my God. Right. And then my uncle got heart disease and died. Then my mother got stomach cancer and died. My father got heart disease and died. And then my brother ended up having the first of three strokes and a heart attack, right? And he's lucky that he didn't die. Wow. So when I saw all that around me, I was concerned, but I thought that I was genetically cursed, right? right. And that's like where my state of mind was. And then I heard about the raw food diet, right? And it seems like, when the teacher, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. All yeah, of a sudden, yeah. like in New York, in the late 90s, early 2000s, we were getting Gabriel Cousins, Doug Graham, uh, Brian Clement, David Wolf, David Job, like all these people that um, were, were on very similar pages with yeah. living foods, raw foods and, and the like. And it really made sense to me right? It really made sense. So I didn't know how to do it, right? I really just didn't know how to do it. And then, you know, I started to do like one raw day at a time, two raw days at a time. And within two weeks, I made the transition from eating anything to vegetarian, vegan, raw vegan. And that felt like at home to me. It was like, wow, wow I get to eat as many like fruits and vegetables I like till I'm not hungry or I'm not full. I'm going to have really good quality movements. Like 
it, it intellectually resonated with me. So I just yeah. celebrated like this is what I was going to do. And then, you know, that's why Denise and I formed Organic Avenue, because we wanted to make it easier for other people to have a selection of fresh, ripe, raw, organic fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, seaweeds, and sprouts that were packaged into grab and go convenient items with juices, salads, entrees, desserts, snacks, because we, that's what we wanted to eat, right? So, yeah. you know, we just thought like, hey, we'll do it for ourselves. We'll do it for our community. And it ended up kind of launching this whole category of grab and go raw food, cold pressed juices and glass bottles. Yeah. And so that was, and that was literally 22 years ago. Yeah, I would love to know a little bit more about the scene you were talking about. So you were working, living in New York. Um, I mean, it sounds like you said there, you made, it was almost like a two week transition from standard American diet foods yeah. towards total raw food diet, which is incredible, which is quite a, a fast change, which I'd like to know, know, know about that a little bit. But also when you're talking about these raw food speakers coming through, what, what was that scene like was that a particular place where there was talks? Was it a yeah. great part of well, what was going on? In the Lower East Side, right, and call it like, you know, the year 2000, there was a raw, there was a vegan restaurant called Caravan of Dreams. Yes. David Jubb had a little shop called um, David Jubb's Longevity. There was a raw food restaurant called Quintessence. Mm -hmm. There was, um, the Candle Cafe and Candle 79 restaurants. Um, there was um, it, uh, Live, Live. Live Live, which was a little snack. And then there was another place called High Vibe. And, you know, did there you was- know, Did you know Bonobos? Yeah, yeah, David Norman at Bonobos. Uh -huh. That started later, you know, right, a okay. little bit later. You know, I think Bonobos probably started in 2003, 2004. Um, but yeah, I knew all those places. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a vibe, you know, where it made sense and people were intellectually into it. Right. And there were potlucks and there were communities and there were speakers. And, you know, I was coming at it initially as this was something that my lifestyle became raw vegan, but I was still in the business world. Right. right. And then in about 2004, um, I was like all in. And then we stepped on the gas and opened up 12 organic avenues and a 20,000 square foot production facility and started to run raw business. Like it was raw business. Yeah. My, my raw nickname was raw CEO because <laughs> like I was operating, you know, a raw business as a CEO and, you know, applying you know, advanced business practices to what these other fledgling, you know, oh, and then Pure Food and Wine opened up. Sure. Like there was a lot going on in New York City. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's really interesting to hear that. I, I think um, I, well, with, with Organic Avenue, I, I'd like to understand a little bit more about, I actually know some of the work for Organic Avenue, I think after you left, uh, a friend of mine, I think, had quite a uh, a, a high up role there. But um, the from what I've read about it, it was it was uh, a place to go that there was uh, juice served and fresh juice and things. But also there was a website to it, so there were deliveries and things as well. There was a a, a big and an event space. Growing. We had we had a two thousand square foot event space, so right. people could come. Like this was early on, but people could come and it was like co-working space. So they could come, they could work. We would have events and speakers, you know, and really opened up to the community from very early in the morning to late at night, seven days a week, right? So we were really committed to, yeah. you know, making these products. And like, I look back now and, you know, we stopped using, you know, any additives or sweeteners and the like, like I remember Denise was, you know, making handmade date paste, you know, as right. a sweetener, yeah. right? And so there was this level of consciousness that we had 
where everything that we made was something that we would eat, right? And look, I think that at other businesses, you know, founders, you know, make compromises, you know, for economics. And I can't argue with that, but we weren't willing to make those compromises. Like we wanted to have these high standards and that's what we live by. And it made it easy for us or easier for us to live the lifestyle. But in hindsight, I think, you know, to live this conscious lifestyle, the most yeah. important thing is to be aware of your, your choice and decisions. So, you know, I can see things that I like, right? Mm -hmm. And it's possible for me to overeat. But now if I'm overeating something, I'm going to be overeating something that's, that's really good, but yeah. it will meet my criteria. Like I'll overeat durian. There's, I would never <laughs> overeat like a processed vegan ice cream or regular ice cream. Right. Like I'm not eating a hot dog. I'm not eating, you know, those foods. And one of the things I love about sprouts is you cannot overeat sprouts, right? Right, you can right. Eat Definitely. Sprouts and then the body will say, okay, time out. You had enough nutrition, you know, go on, do right. something else with your life. Um, I was wondering, it's interesting because obviously you got passionate about the healthy lifestyle and, and your diet was at a top level, right? But I'm interested in, I'm imagining that running a business like that, 10 locations, what was it like trying to fit in a kind of healthy lifestyle with the fact that I imagine there was a lot of long hours, a lot of stress, maybe sleepless nights. Um, so is that, was that a contradiction in a way? No, I, I think that, you know, I would sleep when I could. Like mm -hmm. if I was, you know, on the train going, you know, for a few stops, I'd catch some sleep. I would try to go to sleep early. But to me, this was missionary work. Like it right. was really important that we opened the work, open the stores. I knew how much our customers were counting on us to do the food. And, you know, New York is one of the most expensive places in the world to operate a business. Like, you know, we were spending $25,000 a month, you know, up to $25,000 a month for a single store, right? right. So just rent in the store was almost $1,000 a day, you know, just right. covering overhead with, with rent, gas, electric, utilities, security, and the like. And the labor is also very high. But mm -hmm. it was something that was just so important that, like, I didn't look at it as work. And... I didn't like come home exhausted because like the joy and the health that we were sharing, yeah. like yeah. I was encouraged to do more of it. And I think that's a big difference than, you know, if you're working for the man and you're going into an office and you're in a cubicle and you're doing things that are not aligned with you ethically, morally, spiritually, then it becomes work and taxing. If you're doing things and you're looking at like, wow, we're serving you know, a thousand meals a day to New York City and people are loving it, right? And, oh, it's going to be more work and more hustle. Like, that's fine. You know, the hard thing was um, there was a lot of um, resistance, you know, from so many different forces where they just didn't understand that. They couldn't fathom, like, you know, like when someone would say, oh my God, that that organic cold pressed green juice for $10 is a ripoff. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, you spend $10 for, for a cocktail in a bar. This is made with 100% organic vegetables. This is rainwater that's filtered through the soil, through the roots and the, the stems and the leaves of these plants, right? And in reality, that $10 juice should have cost $20 because we weren't right. making money on the juice at $10. So, so when people would complain about that, I would say, you know, no one has a gun to your head. You don't have to buy it. Like this isn't a debate I wanna have. Like if you earnestly wanna understand why it's beneficial to consume any of the products, I'll share it with you. You just wanna be a troll. You know, sure. there's before, I, I don't have time sure, for sure, this. Sure. I, I got other stuff I wanna do. I, I, wanna, I wanna ask about that as well because it does, I think a lot of people who are, get interested and passionate about health and, and, and raw foods and, and veganism and so on, um, 
they realize what a benefit it can make to other people and, and to other people's health. And um, they want to share that. They want to find a way to share that with others. Uh, and, and you found an incredible way of doing that. But they get, they get met with this resistance, as you're kind of saying. They get met with even resistance from other people who are maybe trying to get the same message out. Um, and as you're saying, it was you were doing it really out of, uh, you know, out of this sense of meaning, this, this, this sense of this purpose. And yeah. psychologically, what was that like when you're, you're working so hard to try and make this benefit to others and you're getting this crazy resistance back? I, I mean, look, I think that um, I could recommend this to the, to the viewers um, and the listeners. Uh, Vipassana meditation is, you know, you can go to their website, dhamma, D-H-A-M-M-A dot org. And, you know, it's a 10 day, 10 day silent meditation. And in the 10 days, you become aware of what your cravings are. You become aware of, of what your aversions are, right? And what you end up clinging to. Mm. So if you're doing this because you wanna be rich or famous, right? You're craving fame, you're craving fortune, um, then um, it's easy to quit because it's, it's a long journey to get there. Right. If you're doing this for the reasons of missionary work, right, right. then it, it really doesn't matter. Like the question I would ask myself every day is like, am I doing the best that I can to achieve these goals? And like if I were expecting it to be easy, you know, then it would be like a delusional wake up call. But knowing that it's going to be hard, knowing that like there were times when we were at risk of not being able to make payroll, right? We had 150 people, right? And we're paying all these rents. I would go down to Wall Street and I would find um, well-dressed men wearing suits, right? Fancy suits that were in, in shiny shoes that were overweight. Right. And I would go up and talk to them in my normal way and basically connect with them and basically say, you're so rich, you've got your Mercedes, you've got your, you know, Brioni suit and your Bali shoes, but you know, you can barely see your pecker, right? You've got this, this belly you can't see, you know, your, your face. And I'm not trying to shame you sure. because you're doing the best you can, but every one of these symptoms is an indication that you are not living your healthiest life. So why don't you tell me what you're eating and I'd spend 15, 20 minutes and then end up, you know, selling them on a food program or a juice program or some health transformation program that would cost several hundreds of dollars. And I would have to do this and I might have to be out there all day to get 10 people in order to make the three or $4,000 that we needed to make to make payroll. That's unbelievable. You actually did that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, you, you end up like... Um, having to face rejection because a lot of people were like, you know, shooing me away like I was a fly, you know, like I was sure. an insect. But, you know, you, you, to me, rejection is just a joke. Like it doesn't mean anything to me. So, and I would connect with people. And then once I built my network and people would consume the food, I really believed in the food, the juices, the smoothies that we were selling, you know, we had a relationship. And then people would see it in the office and then they tell their friends and then they tell their other friends and, you know, it would just grow. But it, it, it took like that white knuckling effort to get Amazing. it over the, over the top to get started. So in the beginning for me, I just knew that that other food was not healthy. And I believe that everything you put in your mouth was a life or death decision. And you can see people smoking cigarettes. Right. And you don't need to be a rocket science to know like that smoking a cigarette is toxic. It's just not healthy. Yeah. And you could see someone eating fast food and it's not healthy. And so when, when you believe that and you don't care what people say about you, what, you know, to you, about you, in front of your face, behind your back, and you don't care about that and you're just out there to do your best, it's very easy. 
And so that's what we did. And you know, that's just been my life. And then I'm gonna fast forward to sprouting. So I moved to the desert. Sure. I live in the Mojave Desert um, about four years ago. I set up my yurt, my tent, you know, that I had from Burning Man. And I had a cooler filled with gourmet raw vegan food, you know, from LA, from a very expensive store, Air One. I had all my goodies there. And then I'm eating out of the cooler. The ice is melting and the cooler is depleted. And then like I go onto my phone and I'm like, where can I eat? And I do vegan near me, raw near me, organic near me, and yep. nothing. It's like, we, were, we weren't even on the radar for a happy cow. You know, Google, I thought we had no internet connection. I was getting no responses. And so I ended up driving that day, like over three hours to go to Whole Foods to stock up my freezer. And I was like, this is not sustainable. I moved out here for peace. So that night I'm looking up at the stars, I'm looking at the Milky Way, I'm looking at the galaxy, and then boom, sprouts. I got the download of sprouts. And I had been sprouting for 20 years at the time. So I knew all about <laughs> sprouts, but I always thought of them as a garnish. I never right. thought of them as, as a food. Yep. And so within 30 days, I went from sprouting alfalfa sprouts and mung bean sprouts to alfalfa, azuki, arugula, azuki, um, radish, clover, beet, flax, hemp, chia, all sorts of lentils, all sorts of peas. And I, I tell you, there were more sprouts that I was growing in one cubic foot than I could eat. Like I was growing more than I could eat. And that was like um, the, the impetus to say, oh, I have now found my next mission and purpose is to share the gospel of sprouts. And having never written anything more than an email, never gone to college, I went to New York. I pitched one of the largest publishers and I said, I'm going to write the sprout book. And I gave her the outline. I gave her some sprouts. I made some recipes. And she was literally eating the sprouts out of the palm of my hand. Like, <laughs> and, and, I, and then I, got, I wrote the book. And now fast forward, April will be two years since the book came out. The sprout book is in the eighth printing, tens wow. of thousands of copies in print. And, you know, I'm seeing a global, you know, a global awakening, you know, of people sprouting. And, you know, connecting with people like Brad and people like you and, you know, yeah. loving it. That's absolutely amazing. Doug, you're definitely, a, you're someone that does things that other people aren't prepared to do. You, you do things uh, um, in a completely different way to a lot of people. You, you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of balls, because <laughs> that is probably the right word. Um, yeah. If you really follow your dreams, you really follow your, your goals, uh, uh, amazingly strongly it's, it's really inspiring I think uh, it's a great message for other people to hear this and to hear that if, if you've got an idea that you just need to go out and try and make it happen and, and push forward with it and you said something that really struck me actually a, a little bit where you said rejection was like a joke to you and I really wish I could have that mentality I need to figure that out because well uh, I challenge you today you need yeah. to go get rejected 10 times today, right? Right. You got to go, you know, and maybe it's a simple rejection. Maybe it's complex. Maybe you're interested, you know, in, in, in going on a date with someone. Maybe you're interested in a job. Maybe you want to ra raise some money, but you got to go and be comfortable hearing no. Right. <laughs> and, and, and just like say, no, okay. Someone says no to me. I say next, you know, right. anything because you need to hear a lot of no's before you hear yes. For sure. So, for sure. so Ronnie, this was really great. I'll, I'll give you one more question before I have to run to my next activity. What okay, do you got? Cool, cool. Right, well, uh, one last question, I guess. Um, give us a little bit of an indication of your advice for beginners and what does a day look like for you at the moment in terms of the, the, the diet you eat now? So my diet um, that I eat now is I begin consuming water when I wake up and I have water until about noon. I've got a narrow feeding window between noon and 6 p.m. Some people call that intermittent fasting, you know, what have you, sure. but I eat between noon and six. 
I usually start breaking my fast with some fruit, whatever is organic, whatever is in season. Mm -hmm. And I eat fruit between like 12 and two or three. And then between four and 6 p.m., I start eating a lot of sprouts and I build up. And generally, like I'll end the day with a big sprout salad with seaweed or wraps. And you can see a lot of, you know, my shenanigans on Instagram, you know, at Doug Evans. And, you know, that's it. And, you know, I, I think that's my day. That's, you know, that's what I do. And it's pretty consistent every day. And, and just to finish off, if, if, we, if we're going to finish there, uh, how do people find out more about you? Where should they go? Um, what- they could sign up. I got a newsletter on thesproutbook.com. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, book is available wherever books are sold worldwide. And on Instagram, I'm Doug Evans. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Doug. Uh, any last minute wisdom for people that are trying to uh, improve their health and their life? I think be yourself, you know, like call yourself on bullshit, right? Just, you know, invoke a level of, of self-control, self-discipline and education and knowing that everything has cause and effect, right? And the only person you can lie to, the only person you can deceive, you know, uh, is yourself. So, you know, just ask yourself, do you want to be, you know, your best version of yourself? And is this serving you to proceed down this path of activity? Thank you so much for giving us some time today, Doug. It's been really amazing to hear your story. Um, Maybe we'll hear a bit more another time, but it's been great to speak to you. Hey, my pleasure, Ronnie. Nice meeting you. Thank you so much for taking the initiative, you know, to do this, uh, to do this podcast and do your work and share this message of the world. I think a lot of people need to hear your work and you got great speakers going on and you're doing great things. So I wish you really well. Thank you very much, Doug. And uh, everyone that's watching and listening, please feel free to share this with anyone you think it would help. And we'll see you in another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Bye-bye now.